Okay, hello, this is Rick Morgan, you know, the, the comic book master that, like, like how do you get that, like, that crayon off that one book, like, what in the world, like, use my special cleaning solution that I make up, I made it, I made it myself, you know that. I don't think I have any here right now, I'm cleaning up my den right now, but I make it, I make my own solution up, and I use it to, I use different solutions, some of them are more polar than others, like a waxy substance, like a crayon, is going to need to be a non-polar solvent. If I'm removing general schmutz and dirt from a comic book, it's going to be um, a polar solvent. I can't make it so polar that it removes the, the oil-based inks that are in a comic book, but I can make it polar enough to remove some of the water-based inks that are not, like in a ballpoint pen. So I have several different solutions I'd use on different compounds. I also use liquid nitrogen on that particular book because I can freeze the wax and chip it off. And that was my secret for that one. That is a lot of talking, so it, this, the, the solution is like a little secret, right? <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I make it up myself, yeah. Secret. Concoct it, yeah. Very secret. Um, well, on a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you like comic books? 10 being like the best thing in the world. Uh, 10? Um, I like them 10, yeah. 10? Mm -hmm. 10. I do. You can see, show people my comic books over there if you want to see some of them. Okay, it looks like a lot more when he stacked them up. Those are the amazing Spider-Man. Well, I can't all the spider Okay, look at this. One, two, three. Each one of these probably has about, I would say, 100 books? Mm, about 150, yeah. Some have 100, but most have That's 100. like a thousand Spider-Man comic books. Well, there's 850 amazing Spider-Mans, but there's... What? There are a couple hundred Web of Spider-Man, there's Protector Spider-Man, there's uh, Marvel Team-Up, I've got Web of Spider-Man over there, I've got all my Moon Knight books, my Batman books, stuff like that as well. And there's books in the garage too. If, um, if, 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 um, you were at, like, the hospital and you're, like, um, your wife would be having a baby. If it was a comic book, would you be happy? Like, really happy or sad? My wife gave birth to a comic book? Well, I might want to talk to the doctor. But, what if you could walk and talk and do everything like a normal human being? It just was a comic book. <laughs> <laughs> you want to see some of my books? Come over here. Yeah, sure. So, Amazing Fantasy 15, 1 and 2 are not here, but we've got the three, yeah. signed by Stan Lee. Come over, go back up so you can yeah. see the book. You can't see it from there, do you? Uh -huh. You're too close. Uh -huh. So there's number three. Yeah. We have four, we have five, we have six, we have seven, we have eight, we have <laughs> nine, we have 10, we have 11. These are all signed by Stan Lee when I met him a few times. 12, wow. 13, 14, ooh, that's, that's a, gosh, that's a beautiful book that makes my heart beat fast. Yeah, wow. 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, etc., etc. for you. Like, some of my early favorite books For are 31. Seven. Well, that's 20. Look at this 28. It's a nice looking book. Oh. Right? We got 31. That's the first appearance of Gwen Stacy and Harry Osborne. Okay. We can go, we've got number 50. That's one of Daddy's other favorites. It's a beautiful cover. Oh, this is actually my room. I love that book. Yeah, I have 59 is the first Mary Jane appearance on a cover, which is a great book. I love yeah. that one. Yeah. Right? Yeah, there's just a lot of good books in here. Daddy okay. likes these ones. This is 64. I love this Romita Vulture cover. And yeah, this well, is Daddy's stuff right here. Which Spider Man comic is your favorite? My favorite Spider Man comic of old, all time? Old and new. Man, you are asking me a hard hmm. question. My favorite story in all of Spider Man comics, I think, is probably. 136 of Amazing Spider-Man when Mary Jane and Peter go on their first real date together uh, after Peter gets back from England and they don't and they still think uh, well Gwen Stacy's dead she hasn't returned so 136 of Amazing Spider-Man as far as stories go the old Ross Andrew and Jerry Conway days that one is great classic Peter early stuff that I really enjoyed now the Romita days I would say Amazing Spider-Man 39 is a good one, but I'll show you the one I'm talking about here, if I can find it. Okay. It is amazing. It's you. down there. Can I ask you another question? Yeah, go ahead. Why have you found so much interest in cleaning comic books? Well, I kind of ran out of comic books to buy. I got all of them several times over. I don't really have any more to do with them, so I don't... Uh, 
I got my very valuable ones sealed away, so I can't really read them. I read them all several times, read them digitally, so there's nothing else to do except apply. How do you apply science to comic books? Pretty easy, right? But let's check out some of these books here. There's the first appearance of the Punisher. And now, as we get a little bit later into these books, they get a little bit hokey, but Mary Jane and Peter in this book, I believe, or knows it this one? They have their first kiss when Peter's going off to England. And then, that's a great book. And then he comes back, and then in this one here, which is a great one, this is autographed by Jerry Conway, by the way, um, they go on their first date together, and she gets kind of blowed up. Uh, coming to his apartment, and that's when they really first know that they're uh, that a couple things happen. One is that Harry is going to be first, he's first time he is going kind of crazy and figuring out that Peter is Spider Man, so things are changing. And then they go on their first date. Now, this one's going to get daddy's got to fix this one. Yeah. See, there they are, this little date time. And then, guess what? She gets blown up, and, and Harry's the one to try to blow Peter up. Yeah. That's one of my favorite stories of them all. It's a great, great story. And this, that, give that a whiff, dude. Check it out. Oh my God. That's the smell of happiness right there. That's what happiness smells like. Yeah. It smells like an amazing Spider-Man 136, brother. Do you recommend comic book clean or um, general, it's like, you know, it's like collecting comic books to well, normal people? People clean it for value. Some people do. I don't because I don't sell comic books. I clean it be to, for preservation. I want the comic books to last longer and look better. And um, I don't sell them, but I clean them partially because I just want to apply some chemistry knowledge to it, but partially for preservation. And uh, I, as you'll notice, I don't get any of my books graded. I don't, I don't have comic books graded at all because I like to read them and reading them makes you so you can't do it. But I like cleaning them and restoring them because I like looking at them and I like looking at them better. Right. Do you clean them because you can get them for a cheap price and then basically just get free money? Well, you kind of don't get free money. It's not free. It's work. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, but you work so that you can read the books better. Well, I like storing them. I like putting them. I like preserving them and putting them away. And I like sorting them. Basically, comic book collecting is just uh, organized hoarding. And so this way I can hoard stuff without people trying to call the cops on me for yeah. being too full of junk but um, no I, I really like it and I like making them look nice and I like having a reader that I can read and I like having one that I can beat up on like that and one that's clean and presentable and I'm going to start presenting them soon I started framing some of them oh. that you'll see here and then I'm going to put them here in my den and decorate things up oh. yeah see where I got you see where I have my statues and stuff I'm putting more statues in okay. more posters up I'll put these comic books in there this is one of my favorite covers. This is the last Spider-Man comic ever before there was a black suit, so this one's special to me because it's probably the last of the original real Spider-Man books, 251, that you could actually call an original Spider-Man story before the black suit. After this one, everything changed. It's got a good view of that. Yeah. It's a great book anyway, but after this, everything changed. Nothing was the same. So there really are only 251 original Amazing Spider-Man comic because after the black suit came out things went different and um, not worse but there's definitely a line drawn and there's a before and then there's an after hmm. and this is uh, the before maybe I have maybe about a couple questions for you yeah okay if if when you think that you've spent probably about a hundred thousand dollars on comic books oh yeah for sure could have spent on like you know uh, kids toys the cyber truck. Cyber then truck. how does that make you feel? Does it make you feel confident? Does it make you feel like you know, like happy? Does it make you feel like No, that's the best possible thing I can do with my money. I'd rather buy comic books than go to the doctor if I'm sick. Okay, understandable. <laughs> I mean unless you have like the the new symptom like you'll explode within like two hours. No, cars come and go, man. I've had a lot of cars. I've you don't want to spend money on girlfriends. You don't want to spend your money on cars. You don't want to spend your money on things that come and go. Uh, you can keep your comic books forever. But then you um, pre-order your um, Cybertruck already? Yeah, I'm probably not going to get a Cybertruck. I'm going with the Ford Mustang okay. now, I think, because uh, cause I like it. Uh, Ford okay. did a good job. <laughs> Why are we talking about cars now? Anyways, um... Uh, yes, sir? Yeah. 
What can I do for you, child? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't, uh, do you like Spider-Man? Yes, I like Spider-Man. Okay. Do you think that um, Mary Jane is a really good side character? She is. She's probably the best. They did a good job of nurturing yeah. that. From he, She first appeared in Amazing Spider-Man 42, but she had cameo appearances from 26 on. And uh, she is. She's great. And the character mm -hmm. slow developed from somebody that uh, was really, we, we thought was not a great match for Peter at all, ended up being a perfect match. So yeah. she's great. Yeah. Do you like the um, Amazing Mary Jane series? It's actually pleasantly and surprisingly good. Yeah, it's much better than... Well, the Black Cat series is good, too. They have a Gwen Stacy, a Black Cat, and a Mary Jane series, all three. The Gwen Stacy one is terrible. It feels really forced. They're really trying to cram a modern version of Gwen Stacy, who is really not that interesting of a character in the old days, and trying to jazz her up a bit. Mary Jane was always kind of feisty and always getting in trouble. And so that shows through in the Black Cat series is actually quite good too. It's actually they're all pretty none of them are real fan service to Spider-Man, which you think they would be. They're they're their own books, but the Gwen Stacy one is a is a thumbs down. But the Mary Jane one's great, and I think the Black Cat one's even better. Yeah. Okay. Did you like um the Spider-Man to the Spider-Verse movie? Yeah, I really loved it. I do not like Miles Morales. I do not like any of the clone Spider-Man. I don't I'm a Peter Parker Spider-Man guy through and no. through, and I'm not a fan of any anything else that I, I think it cheapens the idea of um, the reason that Peter Parker had mechanical web shooters originally was to show that he actually was more than just it couldn't be just any kid got bit by a spider. He actually able to design these web shooters using his noggin. Now when there's 85 or 90 other people that can do it across multiple dimensions, it really cheapens that and it takes away from the original character. I say, make look, don't be lazy. Make up your own character. Give him his own background. Call him Miles Morales, something else. Don't just rob Spider-Man of his identity and his stuff just to ride on the gravy train and get some, you know, get your uh, character some popularity. I figure your own stuff out. Don't steal from what we have. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a Peter Parker guy through and through. I don't even like the the new black suit stuff. <laughs> I'm as old school as you can get. I, I'm a regular Spidey guy, and I really enjoy the, the way that they've made Jonah Jameson know Peter's identity recently, and they sort of have this love-hate antagonistic relationship, and he thinks he's on Peter's side, but he's not. He's messing things up, and uh, it's it's really good. Look at this poster over here. This 1991. Yeah. That's a that's a good era too of Spider-Man stuff. Uh, that was the McFarlane age, which was great. It was good for what it was. Um, but even that wasn't quite for me. That was a hard-edged Spider-Man, so... But, uh, that's it, yeah. Do yeah. you think that it's agreeable that, um, the, influ the influence of the other characters is good in the, um, you know, the time, time, time the, the Spider-Man movie? Thing? Oh, the, 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 uh, Spy Into the Spider-Verse? Yeah, I mean, it's okay. fun for people. It's fun for other people who aren't, don't know much about it, because there's... Gwen Stacy, girl Spider-Man, there's Miles Morales, the, you know, uh, this is a different uh, uh, ethnic Spider-Man or racial Spider-Man. Um, and they say, oh, these are the same thing. It's, it's the same character, only it's now a girl or it's now a different guy. And it goes through the same stuff as, I don't know about these new powers. I'm learning how to use them. I don't know who I am. And just kind of spicing it up for modern audiences because it does feel old and dated. I get that if you haven't been into it already. Um, but it, it is essentially recycling and rehashing. There's nothing in a mile, any Miles Morales book I've seen so far, or any Gwen Stacy Spider Woman book that I've seen so far that uh, had it, those elements have already been explored in older Spider Man, Amazing Spider Man, Marvel Team Up, and Spectacular Spider Man decades ago. They're very, very similar. And they're, even the new Spider-Man books are not significantly different than previous stories we've seen. Even though they do different things with Peter every once in a while, like make him rich, swap his brain with Dr. Octopus. They always return to base, which is fun. And they get, they're get they not really doing Monster of the Week anymore, but um, the new characters are still like, oh, I'm exploring these new power. Oh, what a curse it is to be young and awesome and powerful. I really hate it. I can't stand it. So... Um, they're just reviving an old character through a new lens, in my opinion. And I, I like I like the original. I'm just old school. Okay, but we have ten seconds left. Okay, so do you appreciate the work on the new um, Spider-Man movie and think that it's really good on the work on it? Absolutely. 
Okay. There's lots of Easter eggs for people like me. Okay. 